the manager of opposition business. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that so much of the standing in session will orders be suspended as we prevent the manager of opposition business from moving the following motion immediately. That the House one notes that the House unanimously asks the High Court to determine whether the Deputy Prime Minister is constitutionally qualified to be a member of Parliament and therefore to determine if the government has a majority. B. The Deputy Prime Minister has admitted he was a citizen of a foreign power right up until the weekend and has already started campaigning for the New England by-election. C. Former Minister Matt Canavan has resigned from Cabinet and will not vote in the Senate until the High Court resolves doubts about his constitutional qualifications. D. The Prime Minister is continuing to accept the Deputy Prime Minister's vote in this House, even though it means that victims of the banks are denied the Royal Commission they have been calling for and Australians continue to have their penalty rates cut. And E. The situation with the Deputy Prime Minister is unsustainable. And yeah. two, Therefore, calls on the Prime Minister to a admit his continued reliance on the Deputy Prime Minister's vote is causing real harm to the people of Australia. B. Rule out accepting the vote of the Deputy Prime Minister while his constitutional qualifications are in doubt. And C. Direct the Deputy Prime Minister to immediately resign from Cabinet. The Prime Minister told the truth today when he said he was transparent. When the Prime Minister said he was transparent, he was spot on because no one has missed the transparency of a Prime Minister who will do and say anything to cling to office. This is an illegitimate government throwing a tantrum, and as they throw a tantrum and throw the toys in every direction, they don't care, they don't care who they contradict, even when it's themselves. They're willing to jeopardise a relationship and create a a new international incident with New Zealand. They're willing to jeopardise arguments they made as recently as Monday. They're willing to undo the arguments that they made when Senator Kenavan resigned. And they're willing to completely undo the arguments that they put in place when the Greens' resignations took place. You see, the thing with this Prime Minister, the Prime Minister will probably get up later in the House and he'll be very passionate. But in order to believe what the Prime Minister says today, you have to ignore what he said last week. And this issue is exactly the same as everything we get from this Prime Minister. Issue after issue, no matter how much passion he brings to the table, you can only believe what he says today if you ignore what he used to say. It's not long ago, it's not long ago that we heard it was incredible sloppiness on the part of the Green Party. But administratively, just how hopeless they were. Could the manager and of yes. opposition business just pause for a second? I don't want Edu in his time. Members on the government side, on my right, will resume their seats or leave the chamber. The treasurer. The manager of opposition business. Thanks very much, Mr. Speaker. In terms of what happened when the Green Party resigned, the arguments from the government then. If you want to believe those arguments are right, then their defence of the Deputy Prime Minister can't be right. Because they're the defence of the Deputy Prime Minister now is, oh, he didn't know. He had no way of knowing. And so if that argument's right, then every criticism they made about the Green Party is completely wrong. The arguments that they put in terms of the responsibility of Senator Canavan and whether Senator Canavan had done the right thing. If he did the right thing, and they argued it passionately then that he was doing the right thing, then everything the Deputy Prime Minister is doing now is completely wrong. But we'll hear passionately now. We'll hear the Prime Minister argue with the same level of passion as to why his deputy is doing the right thing now, with the exact opposite argument to what he put when Senator Canavan decided to step aside and not vote. But of all the arguments, of all the arguments that this government has been willing to put, Nothing has been more bizarre than their conspiracy theories. It's interesting today. No dixer from the Minister for Foreign Affairs. I was ready to move the extension of time. I was ready to move the extension of time. But the opportunity just wasn't there. Because instead of looking like Sherlock Holmes uncovering the conspiracy, it was the school prefect saying, how dare you dob on us? That was the argument they wanted to put. They were, they were like that final scene of Scooby-Doo when they say, oh, we would have got away with it too if it wasn't for you meddling kids. Because, because what they've put forward and their entire defence here 
The whole conspiracy theory is based on the fact that they didn't think they'd get found out. And that's what they're upset about, that the Deputy Prime Minister has been willing to go through the entirety of his parliamentary career in, in breach, on the face of it, of Australia's constitution. And their objection, their anger, the conspiracy is somebody worked it out. Somebody worked out that maybe this government with a majority of one was in fact a minority government. Somebody worked out that when they were ridiculing the Greens, not, it's not just some anonymous backbencher who was, who was guilty of doing the same thing. It was the Deputy Prime Minister of Australia. What those opposite don't seem to understand, but a lot of their backbench from Phil Curry's article have worked it out, which is simply this. What they have done this week is not sustainable. Everybody knows if they let this two-week break go and Parliament comes back on the 4th of September, do they really think we will have moved on? Do they really think the Australian people will suddenly be OK with the concept that every time there's a vote in this House, we don't know if it's a legitimate majority? Every time the Deputy Prime Minister of Australia stands up, we don't know if he's legally in office. When the Prime Minister goes overseas, Australia will be the only country in the world being run by someone where their own country doesn't know whether he's legally allowed to do the job. That's the situation and the embarrassment that this Prime Minister is willing to put us in. And I've got to say, you wouldn't need much authority when the evidence is this strong. You wouldn't need much authority to say, Deputy, you've got to stand aside. If the High Court clears you, you'll come back. It wouldn't take much authority to do that. How little authority does this Prime Minister have that he can't even, in the face of the court of the House unanimously referring the matter to the High Court, he can't even say that to his deputy? All he can do is look down the barrel of a camera and say, oh, I'm a really strong leader. Oh, I'm a really, really strong leader. Strong leaders don't need to say that, Prime Minister. Strong leaders don't need to make comments like that. But you don't need to be a terribly strong leader to say, if we don't know whether or not we're governing legally, maybe we ought to ask him to stand aside. That's not an unreasonable position for the government to arrive at. But this Prime Minister has so little authority, he cannot even bring it to that. And they'll want to argue. They'll want to argue that somehow this is a matter only within the Canberra bubble that doesn't have an impact on the real-life consequences of Australians. Well, tell that, tell that to the victims of the banks when they get denied a royal commission in this place by one vote. Tell that to the shop assistants who the Prime Minister dismissed at Penrith Plaza, saying, oh, no, trickle-down economics will work for them. They'll get jobs. They've got jobs. The problem is they had a pay cut. And the reason they've had a pay cut was one vote. One vote. One vote from Member some of the Karanga lowest paid workers in this country getting a pay cut or having their conditions protected. And it was the one vote of the Deputy Prime Minister that may well have been unlawful. The Prime Minister might like to think this issue will drift off because the media cycle will move on. I say to the Prime Minister, just stop and think about the gravity of what we are talking about this week. They only have a majority of one, and we have unanimously voted to the High Court that we don't know whether that majority is lawful. This is a big deal. This is a big deal. And this doesn't require much leadership to be able to move on. And if the people behind the Prime Minister have given him so little authority that he can't even direct a member of his front bench who might be there unlawfully to step aside for a couple of months, then why are you keeping him there? If you won't give the Prime Minister enough authority to make a simple decision like that, then, then make the move that the member for Warringah is beckoning on. Because if there was any stability on those behind him, there would be stability in this parliament. And there is not. The government at least last week thought, oh, maybe this week they'll get a diversion from the postal vote. Maybe they'll get a diversion from the postal survey. Well, they got it. They got the diversion they were looking for. 
and the entire legitimacy of this government is called in question, and those opposite in the front row might not have worked it out, but the Australian the people have, and those behind them have worked it out too. Concluded.